It's Friday and it's another one of our From the Barn series. I'm going to look at drone reads today. I apologise for the plastic behind. It's not that I've been broken into or anything, but the, it's a really sunny day and the sun's shining right in and you can't, you can barely see me with the with the light behind me. Anyway, when I was growing up many, many years ago, I started piping when I was 10 and um, I was on the pipes about 11 and uh, we always use cane reeds um, for drones it's just one of those things that's all we had at the time and you have to learn how to adjust it, it's quite the learning curve to to get it right with cane especially the uh, the tenors the tenors can be because they're let, let a little bit smaller a bit more finicky so I'm sure you've all used these in the past Easy drone reads, these are punk, you know, kind of the industry standard. I use these myself, they're great. Um, <clears throat> so, this is a body with a hole through it, it comes down to here ish, and then you've got a hole in there, and over that hole is a bit of, I don't know if you can see that, a bit of plastic, and this bit of plastic vibrates over the hole and that makes the sound obviously uh, the shorter the the piece of plastic the faster it's going to vibrate and it's going to make a higher pitch sound and also you have this tuning screw at the end here this will go out or in um, depending on whether you want to sharpen it up out to, to flatten it in to sharpen it and what it basically does is uh, makes the column of air from here into the drone longer if you wind it out so the, the um, area that's hollow within here is much bigger and that will flatten it off. Uh, of course if you want to sharpen it up we're moving that whole thing all the way up again so uh, that's uh, that's one way of, uh, well, see, anyway, of really getting some good adjustment. I guess another way of doing it is getting the tongue set right. Um, the more open it is uh, the, the lower pitch it's going to be, but you, you don't want them that open, you want them to be just at um, the right pressure for you to play them at and then you can uh, adjust the pitch from here which is really handy. Right, <coughs> so that's modern reeds. These are drone reeds, cane drone reeds. So this is one from um, my old teachers I've got loads of his stuff, as you probably realise by now. Um, these are his drone reeds. I think they must go back to about the 50s or something. And he used them with uh, the pipes I have now. These these were his pipes for his uh, lifetime. But I've got these to work, and I put kind of a temporary bridle on there, which is um, a, a, a tie clip thing. You know, you just tighten it up. They actually work all right, but when you when you do the hemp bridle. It's, it's nice to be able to get a different um, pressure so you can tighten it up a little bit and that will make the breed a little bit brighter and a little bit higher pitch so if you don't want that you can leave it a little bit looser but um, this you, you don't get much adjustment with but it's, it's pretty good so this is the the old reed and this is one of my reeds obvious difference much bigger diameter on the old one than mine, which would obviously uh, make the pitch lower. Uh, I'm going for a higher pitch for today's standards. And if you'll notice, I've got the the length is almost the same. The tongue is almost identical as well and the place it's tuning is the same. So I guess the biggest difference is the, the diameter of the tube cane. And the other thing that is different with these is the fact that when you when these are cut in, you have to go in with a razor blade or something and then flip it up and that naturally um, splits the cane. It's, all the lines are parallel on this, so the deeper you go, the, the, the bigger the tongue's gonna be this way. If you don't go so far you get a smaller tongue or a more narrow tongue. Now when you cut 
cut them, I always cut them at about a 30 degree angle, but here it's almost at 90 degrees there. And I'm, I'm finding them to stick a little bit, so I've filed the back out of that one so that I could uh, use it for a demonstration today. Here's the base. This is the old one. Of course, I've got a modern um, tie clip on there, whatever you call them. And now there's not such a perceptual difference with these two. Um, the, the diameter is almost the same, but you can see on on the top one that the it's cut at a like a 30 degree angle from from 90 degrees, so you know, it'll be about 60 degrees from cutting that way and this one it's almost directly up and down but it's um, got a little bit of curve on it but a little bit more it would be easy to use and again the tongues are more or less the same length and the same width so you know there's not an awful lot of difference between reeds before and now except for you know, they generally tend to be much thicker um, in uh, diameter so this is uh, my old McDougal's. Um, now the bore on this, get it out, the bore on this base drone is enormous compared to modern um, pumps. You can see that. And that makes it really quite low pitched. And as a result of that, I like playing um, synthetic tenors and a cane bass. I think that the sound's better from a cane bass. I have to sink it all the way in. The bridle's just about on the top of the drone there, uh, the, the uh, tenon there, and uh, it's the only way I can get it up to pitch. It looks almost like a tenor drone when I'm done with it. And my pitch is about 4, 480, 482, where I like to, like to have it sit. So, uh, that's about 482. Got the tuner here. So, first thing I'm going to do is take that out and put one of the, see how much he's buried, only sit about there. Um, yeah, I'm going to put a, one of the older bases in. Now, people tend to think that uh, old chances used to go down to B flat or something around there. Um, the, all the old chances I've had, and, and with the old reeds, about 470, 472. They may have made different reads. Um, at least they've had about 1850, 1870s, something like that. They may have made, I'm sure they did make different reads at the time. And they have been um, naturally a lower pitch because once I, once I put this in, it's almost at the same pitch as the last one. I get it to work. This is what I'm saying about the ends needing a bit more. I'm just spring in the tongue. Nope, oh, going wrong way. Just to make it work for the time being. Now that's a lot lower. Let's see where we are on the old Richter scale here. I'll, I'll be out of the street for a second. So that's 466. So that's actually right on B flat. Um, obviously, you've got a bit more. Um, scope here to put it in and out wherever you want to be. So um, you can move it in, move it out. It's very quiet at the moment, but it just needs a bit of work. I just got it straight out of the box and put that temporary uh, tie on there. So uh, that's that. So that more is the same. If I took the, the that off there and sunk that in the drone, I'd probably do the same thing. Let's just try that. All interesting stuff, anyway. Right, here we go. Although the knees, oh, it doesn't go. That's just how big that uh, bore is on the on the base drone standing joint there. I call that standing joint. It's, it's the bottom joint, but it's the one that doesn't move. So I call it the standing joint. As long as people understand what the heck you're saying, it doesn't really matter, does it? And I'm sure I've got the name of these tie things wrong, but, you know, you know what I mean. Let's just uh, get rid of that.
Leave it. Alright, what are you seeing there? You see that? Well, that's coming up to about 470, 472. I'd obviously have to work on that reader a bit more to get it to working. So, it just shows you that uh, the difference is that pitch. The narrower the, the drone, and the hemp stayed in there, um, the uh, higher the pitch. A lot of people, when they get old pipes like this, they just have the um, standing joint replaced on it. I just, you know, these are all um, a complete original set here, so I'm not going to do anything to mess that up, but it's not, you know, it's not the hardest thing in the world to, to put this in. Now, there we go. So, um, as far as adjusting the pitch and the, uh, the volume and that sort of thing, whereas on the synthetic reeds you have a screw here and you can move it in and out. You don't have this on a drone reed. So, obviously one way of sorting it out, like I do with the bass drone, is to move it in and out of the, um, the tenon on the tenor drones. This is a tenor drone reed and that will bring it up. The other thing is you can do is just make sure that the tongue is a good length uh, for the way you want to play. It, if it uh, if it plays too high you can you can actually bring the let's see that with that can you see that just bring the bridle back quite a ways and I'm gonna spring it from down here. If you spring it up here it kind of bends like that and uh, it'll, it's, it'll probably squeal on you. So I'm just bending it from the Let's see, I'm putting quite a bit of bend on that. Right, next thing to do, let's move the bridle down, see where we are with the pitch. So that's how you would do that. As far as sound is concerned, the, the difference between synthetic tenors and cane tenors, yeah, there's not a huge amount of difference. I just like that presence of a cane bass, it's got that warmth to it. I think we've covered everything. If I haven't, please uh, uh, send something in the comments. This is for Jack Williamson, by the way. Hey, Jack. Um, Jack wanted to know the difference between the uh, old reeds and the, and the new ones. So there you have it. Not a huge difference, but it makes a it makes a huge difference. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Goodbye.